you know, I think your group is uh, offers something unique because uh, you know, in Virginia, for instance, you know, we we had um, that there was a, a package of gun control bills that passed here under uh, you know the former governor uh, when right. Democrats had control of the state. But even during that period, they were considering a much uh, a much stricter option of trying to of banning uh, you know assault weapons, or so-called assault weapons, you know AR-15s and so forth, and even uh, potentially confiscating them or you know doing a mandatory buyback situation or making it illegal to possess the ones you already had, right. and so uh, that got blocked by the Democrats in the Senate. You know people like uh, Chad Peterson and. You know, the NRA and VCDL uh, certainly played a big role in that. They they were able to mobilize a lot of people, a lot of supporters. It's a huge rally in, in Richmond, and the NRA did a lot of work, uh, you know, with lawmakers uh, on the, you know, in the state house itself. Um, but, you know, your group uh, also met, you know, continues to meet with, with Chad mm-hmm. Peterson and, and some of these other uh, lawmakers on the Democratic side, and you know, it's it seems like there's certainly potential, at the very least, that could have a significant impact on how they, uh, you know, approach the issue, at least especially on you know the the more finite details, or you know where they where they might draw the line on what, you know, like in this case, what they're willing to vote for and what they're not. You know, they were willing to vote for something like universal background checks. Um, or, uh, you know, local gun-free zones for uh, parks and, and so forth, which right. they did pass, but they weren't willing to go the extra step even when they could have, given uh, democratic control of, uh, you know, the entire state government at that point. And, um, you know, so th- that's where I could see you know, a group like yours having that, that sort of uh, additional impact that somebody like the NRA or VCDL, as much as they legitimately did do in that situation um, and have done, uh, you know, across the country and at the federal level, uh, there's something that, that's out of their reach in terms of that kind of influence. Right, right. And, and so it's hard, right? It's hard for groups like the NRA and that kind of thing. They're not going to influence the lawmakers they don't donate to. Um, and they're not going to influence the lawmakers who they frankly spend a lot of time um, denigrating. And we don't do that, you know, and, and we try really hard not to do that. You, you don't see our group doing a lot of that. Um, you certainly don't see it at the state level at all. And, and even, you know, I mean, are there Republican politicians who are not popular in our group? Oh, yeah, for sure. But again, like I said, I think there's as many Democrats who aren't popular. And but you see people in our group going in and saying, hey, you know, I'm not coming in to tell you you're an idiot. I'm coming in to tell you, here's why this idea is a bad one. This is what doesn't work within democratic liberal ideals. This is why this doesn't match a liberal ideal. Let's fix that. And and even like I've done stuff behind the scenes when. Um, a state was looking at adopting a red flag law. I worked with somebody else outside of our organization, but who invited me and who said, hey, the Democratic governor really wants a red flag law. Can you talk with the chief of staff and another person involved in kind of making this law, you know, framing what they want so that they understand the problem with these laws? You know, where where are the liberal concerns about red flag laws? And so we went in and we talked to them about, you know, how these are used, what's bad, what's the problem they're really trying to solve versus what these laws actually do, that kind of thing. And and so we do. We have that credibility and we try to keep that up um, and we work really hard. And, and it, it makes it difficult because there's groups that we just frankly don't publicly affiliate with because we can't and keep the uh, the credibility with the people we need to reach. We can get into the rooms where other people don't get into, you know, and, and, and so we try to keep the credibility for that. Right. Um, now, uh, you know, so the, all these new gun owners that, that have come up right. recently, what, what, uh, you know, I guess, what, what is your message to try to appeal to them? What, how do you guys, um, you know, if someone's listening now who maybe feels out of place uh, somewhere like the NRA or, or, you mm-hmm. know, any of the other gun groups, um, but they still want to get involved in both, you know, a shooting community, but also political uh, advocacy. You know, what what what's your message to people like that? 
Um, you know, our message is we're there. We've been doing this a, a long time. Um, we're one of the more established groups. Not only do we have the advocacy side, but we do have the fun side and the serious training side. You know, if, if you have bought a gun and you have a spouse who really hates it, come talk to us about it. We've all been, well, not me, but <laughs> I, I'm the one that my spouse got me into shooting. But, but numerous ones of our members have been through that. Um, we have lots of trans members. We have lots of gay members. We have um, we have lots of members who are in marginalized communities of all types. Um, we have people who understand that and understand the particular concerns to different communities who will talk to you about that. Um, you're not going to be talked down to because you're new. You might get so much information, you're not sure what to do with it, <laughs> but we're going to give you all the help we can possibly give you. Um, and we're going to do it in a way that we want you to feel comfortable and safe. Um, if you are looking for an instructor and you live somewhere that we don't have an instructor, we'll get someone to you. Um, even if we have to do online training with you, if you, I, again, so let's say you're a spouse whose spouse bought a gun and you really hate this. Um, come talk to me or come talk to us. We actually have a training for non-gun owners about make it safe, about what do you do if there is a firearm in your home that you need to make safe, not in an immediate danger type of situation, not if someone is pointing it at you, but you find a gun in your teenager's room. You live in a neighborhood that's not safe and you find you know, a firearm unsecured and you cannot call the police for whatever reason. We can teach you that. We can do it on video. We have a whole lecture series for that kind of thing. Um, but we also have lots of fun. Do you want to come talk about all kinds of issues? You know, we have a Discord channel that has channels for everything. We have gun pets. We have, you know, the pub channel, which is what everybody's having for dinner. We have, um, a book club we have, which is really interesting because a lot of the books are actually books. We have a ton of authors as members. So we read members, we read members books, like things they've written, um, which are not gun books and they're all kinds of things. Um, we have, you know, we're a big broad community to come talk to and, and learn from, but also interact with and hopefully make friends. And, you know, we, we want everyone to feel comfortable and we do understand. I mean, I found the group because I, when I started shooting, I was looking for a community to learn from. And I found one of just the kind of the most notoriously terrible gun groups through a Google search. I mean, really one that's like known for being truly awful, even in the gun world. Um, and I went, oh God, this, maybe I don't want to do this. And then I started Googling and I found out that the club existed and it was much, much smaller at the time. Uh, but you know, come, come talk to us. If you are not feeling comfortable, if you want to know how do I handle my local gun store who has Nazi paraphernalia, you know, mm. how do you guys handle that? Because unfortunately that's out there. Um, you know, who do you guys buy from? Who do you use as an FFL? Who do you, all those kind of questions. Um, how do you as a member, you know, how do you as a woman or a trans person, I went to my local gun shop and I felt really uncomfortable. What do I do? We have all of that for you. We've all, you know, we, we can supply you with so many people that can talk to you about that. Um, and, and we, you know, but we're also going to go have fun at the range. You know, we'll invite you out to a great fun day. Uh, we want everybody to have fun and, the, and, but we want everybody to be safe too. 